I'm surprised George Osborne was only hit with orange confetti. So the biggest story in the UK media at the moment is George Osborne being hit with orange confetti on his wedding day. Mind blowing. I mean that and the BBC scandal of the uh, presenter who apparently was paying money to teenagers for explicit photos. But also another story that got buried was emails about George Osborne. Stuff like this about George Osborne apparently getting it on with a teenager. The teenager thing and George Osborne seems to be really, really hot on the presses in the UK at the moment. So why is George Osborne being hit with confetti at his wedding, topping the headlines at the moment? Well, it's because everyone in the British establishment, in the government, in the media, on the radio, etc., are all coming out in his defence. George Osborne, of all people, Mr. Austerity, Mr. I'm going to result in approximately 330,000 deaths in this country, is being defended tooth and nail, not just by Tories, not just by random media pundits, but also the Labour Party. You know, the kind of people who are meant to be the opposition, who are meant to be strongly opposed to George Osborne, who killed approximately 330,000 people. Okay, I won't say he killed them. I'll say he was responsible for the deaths of 330,000 people because of his austerity measures. And what, what do the UK media do? They say, oh, well, you should never disrupt someone's wedding day as a protest. It's a special day, so it should be exempt from protests. Remember, guys, if you're going to be protesting against something and uh, apparently people were saying this was a just a oil thing, just a oil are not associated with this at all. It just happened to be orange confetti. So everyone was like, it's just up oil. They're destroying his special day. What do you mean? It's a protest. Protests are meant to be disruptive. I know the British government and the Labour Party as well seem to think it's completely okay for protests to have absolutely no meaning in this country and it seems like the media establishment also feel like it's okay for there to be absolutely no consequences for terrible things that politicians do and that they should not be disturbed by these protests by the peasants apparently. Quite frankly, the fact that it has been normalised by the British media and by British politicians to say that protests should not inconvenience the people you are protesting against shows how terrible of a state this country is in. That even the opposition party to the government that is introducing draconian laws surrounding protesting, such as the policing bill, the opposition government are also saying, with the opposition to the government, are also saying, guys, be nice. Come on, guys. Don't protest this guy who, once again, is in part responsible for 330,000 deaths in this country. Don't protest him. Come on, guys. Don't protest that guy who these leaked emails suggest was trying to get on with a teenager. Come on, guys, don't do that. Like, it's, I'd expect this from the Tories, even though, even though George Osborne isn't, you know, a loyalist to Rishi Sunak. I'd expect this from GB News. I'd expect this from, I don't know, even LBC. But for the Labour Party to come out and be like, hey, guys, come on, let's not do this. Let's defend George Osborne and then sh you know join in in shouting down anyone who says why who questions this idea that a special day should mean an exemption for protests it's just mind-boggling if the Labour Party just didn't say anything I'd have a modicum more respect for them than coming out and defending George Osborne but it just seems this whole idea of, ooh, guys, come on, protests, they're not cool, they're on vogue right now, has infected the Labour Party even more. It goes back to my video, what's the point of the Labour Party if they're not going to be pro-protest? 
it's infuriating because I expect this from the Conservatives, as I've already said. I expect this from most of the media, to be honest, but for the Labour Party to come out and defend George Osborne when you could simply say nothing is mind-blowing. Now, like I said, George Osborne is in part responsible for a third of a million deaths. George Osborne allegedly was trying to get it on with a teenager. And in this country, those things mean far, far less than inconveniencing an ultra-rich posh kid on his wedding day. It's just obscene. And frankly, I am shocked it was just orange confetti. But orange confetti seems to be just the equivalent of anthrax these days, according to the British media. And remember, once again, this was a protester who was vetted by the security. They were let in, but because of the colour orange, it was pinned on Just Up Oil, who are at the moment the boogeyman for the Tories to point at. You know, sometimes it's trans people, sometimes it's refugees, sometimes it's Just Up Oil. You know, I'm sure at some point they'll blame the RSPCA for something. <sighs> British politics is insane. Anyway, comment down below what colour confetti should have been thrown at George Osborne. I think it should have been red for the blood of the 330,000 people he is responsible for killing. Uh, that's just me. Let me know down below. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe and share the video with a friend or family member. And hey, confetti isn't illegal. It's very normal in weddings. Maybe she just wanted to give him some orange confetti, who knows?